I tested five different RTX 3070 laptops at different power levels to see how they would perform in gaming. With the release of the 30 series Ampere graphics architecture, NVIDIA requires laptop manufacturers such as MSI, Lenovo and HP to list the power limits of the graphic cards. The more power you can supply to the laptop, the higher performance, and as a result, you get more FPS from your games. With more power comes more heat, and therefore a bigger and heavier laptop is required to cool down the components properly. On the contrary, lower power means less heat, and you can generally fit the GPU into smaller, more compact laptop chassis. The RTX 3070 laptop GPU is specified to operate between 80 to 125 watts. All laptops are capable of dynamic boosting, a technology that shifts power from the CPU to the GPU whenever there is less need of CPU power in a graphics-intensive game. In this video we are taking a look at how much the gaming performance can vary at different power levels with the RTX 3070 laptop GPU. Five different laptops with different power limits of the RTX 3070 has been tested. The Tough Dash is the only laptop with a quad-core CPU with 35 watts of TDP. All other laptops in this comparison have optical variants. Second laptop from the lineup is the Tough A15 with an AMD CPU and 90 watts of base TGP. The next two laptops share the same chassis, and it is the Zephyrus G15 and Zephyrus M16 from Republic of Gamers. Both laptops share the same base TGP of 80 watts. Finally, we have the SCAR 17 gaming laptop with a base TGP of 115 watts and a possibility of reaching 130 watts through dynamic boost. Here are the Cinebench and Firestrike results for those of you who are interested in synthetic benchmark scores. Just pause the video if you want to take a closer look. I ran all tests using the game's native benchmark app running in ultra settings at 1080p resolution. Starting with Assassin's Creed Origins, the game is a couple of years old. However, it is a good representation for graphics-heavy benchmarks. The Tough Dash had the lowest average score in this game, but it also has the lowest TGP, at just 80 watts. It's interesting to see how the i9 in the M16 can match the results from the SCAR 17, despite a much lower GPU power limit. Overall, there is a 24% difference in average FPS between the highest and lowest RTX 3070 in this specific test. Moving on to a more modern Assassin's Creed. In Valhalla, the M16, with its Intel CPU, was again able to match the SCAR 17, despite differences in power levels. The difference between the highest and lowest results was just 12% on average. In Gears 5, the Tough Dash was 2% behind the Zephyrus G15, 12% behind the M16, both rated at similar power levels, and 19% behind the SCAR 17 with 115 watts of TGP. This difference continues in Horizon Zero Dawn, as the SCAR 17 beats the lowest RTX 3070 with a margin of 16% in average FPS. Metro Exodus is a GPU-heavy game. The difference between the highest and lowest score was measured to 15%. There wasn't a huge difference amongst the middle pack of 90 to 100 watt RTX 3070 laptops. Same observations was made in RDR2, where the biggest delta between all RTX 3070 laptop GPUs was 16%. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, with a quad-core i7 in the dash, did excellent in keeping up with the other laptops, with a benchmark score of 92 FPS, a respectable score that would put it near an RTX 3060 laptop GPU at max power level. 
Strategy fans, don't worry. I have prepared game tests for you as well. All laptops runs well in Total War 3 Kingdoms, and the difference between the highest and the lowest performing GPU was 14%. In Troy, a Total War Saga, there was a 16% performance difference between Tough Dash and Scar 17. Warhammer 2 seems to be optimized for Intel CPUs, as even the quad-core version could rival laptops with twice the CPU core count. Back to order with Tom Clancy's The Division 2, as the relative difference between the high wattage RTX 3070 to the lower wattage version was 17%. Finally, with Watch Dogs Legion, one of the most hardware-intensive titles, the relative difference between highest and lowest GPU score was 12%. Summarizing all 12 games, some interesting observations can be made from these results. The Tough Dash, with the quad-core i7, was on average 15% slower than the RTX 3070, rated at 115 to 130 watts. Considering this houses in a thin and light package, designed for long battery life, the Dash represents an excellent value for money in a watt-for-dollar battle. Amongst the group of 80 to 100 watt RTX 3070 laptops designed with portability in mind, this laptop would be my first pick when it comes to gaming performance. If you want a laptop for content creation, the Zephyrus Laptops represents better choice, as the multicore performance from an optical CPU is far superior. If you want the highest performing RTX 3070 laptop at lowest possible cost, consider the Tough A15 gaming laptop. For zero compromise on performance, no matter the cost, pick an RTX 3070 laptop with the highest GPU wattage preferably with the 11th gen Intel CPU. For those of you wondering about the 125 watt version of the RTX 3070 laptop GPU, the performance level would be close to that of an RTX 3080 at 115 watts. Watch this video if you are interested in the level of performance in gaming from an RTX 3080 laptop GPU. I hope this video brought you some useful insight to the different variants of the RTX 3070 laptop GPU. Drop your questions and comments in the comment section below. Take care and see you in the next video.